Hello everybody, Max Cavalera here, so fly, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, it's Wikipedia Factor Fiction time once again. Today we've got the one and only Max Cavalera. Thank you so much for coming, man. I really appreciate it. Awesome to have you here. So, we're going to clear up Wikipedia. So basically I'm going to look at some stuff that you know I got from your page, uh, Sepultura, Soulfly, all that stuff, all the albums, all the songs, and uh, you can give me a fact or fiction and elaborate if you'd like. So, first of all, uh, you were born uh, Massimiliano Antonio Cavalera in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's, all, that's all good. That's all good. Okay, perfect. They, they do even mess that up sometimes, so it's good. Okay, one fact. Um, it says your father, uh, Grazino Cavalera, um, who sadly passed away when you were nine years old, was an employee of the Italian consulate in Sao Paulo. Yep. Yeah? What did he, what did he do there? He was a uh, kind of a uh, uh, diplomat, you know, yeah. some, some form of diplomat, and, and, uh, because he was Italian, you know, and sure. came from the war. The family came from the war. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. They, they escaped. They escaped the war and went to Sao Paulo. Right before he died, uh, the next year we're all gonna move to uh, Rome. The whole family. Oh, we're wow. going to move to Italy and start a whole new life there. You know, so probably if he wouldn't die, I probably maybe wouldn't even become a musician. It would have been a whole different life. You know, so it's very. Uh, what happened is very. Uh, crucial in my history, you know, the fact that he died and we, he didn't set up uh, any kind of fund because he was very young, he was only 41. So my mom got just a little bit of money, but not much. So we end up, had to move back to, we, we live in Sao Paulo, but had to move back to Belo Horizonte and live with my grandma in a, in a, a back room in her house, which was only like one bathroom, two rooms, very small, and we didn't have any money. And from that depression, from that pissed off environment, that's when metal comes in. Uh, 1991, a Sao Paulo show. Um, local military police expected 10,000 people to attend, but 30,000 ended up coming, making the crowd management nearly impossible. It says six people were hurt, 18 were arrested, and one was shot and passed away. Almost everything is true on that, except uh, the person got killed with an axe. There was a skinhead. Oh my God. So some skinheads came to the show. It was a free show in front of a soccer stadium. And uh, skinheads do not like metalheads, you know, and uh, they'll come and cause trouble whenever they could. And this guy came looking for trouble that day, and uh, yeah, he got one of our fans and uh, with an X right in his chest, and it, it was all the news next day. It was uh, all about the violence that we promote. Of course, you know, it always comes they, back to the music. They blame us for it, you know, of course. But it was a, it was a, just an idiot skinhead, just being a skinhead, you know, just causing shit, you know, and. Uh, but everything else is pretty uh, accurate. All right. uh, that's interesting because I thought, you know, when they said shot, I thought it may have been one of the police, and I know that your music has been anti-cop at, at yeah. times. If, but uh, this kind of uh, gets into it a bit because on the Chaos AD tour in Berlin, the police said that, uh, or Wikipedia rather, said that the police received a false tip claiming that Sepultura's tour bus was loaded with a major cocaine shipment. Yeah. Yeah. And it said that uh, after, you know, what you considered to be a, an unjust search and seizure, seizure procedure, uh, you rewrote Antichrist uh, as anti-cop. I think so. It was about the same time um, we were... Uh, what happened was a, was a was a bus driver that just got we fired a bus driver and okay. and I, he got mad at us and called the, the police in Germany and 
given a tip that we were not a rock band, that we were actually oh my God. Uh, South American drug dealers traveling in Europe, you know, with the tour bus and everything. Like, <sighs> go figure, you know. And uh, <clears throat> it was scary, man, you know, because it was uh, uh, three in the morning right after the show, and they stopped the bus and they came on the bus with no no copy in front. They had regular clothes, civilian clothes, you know. So I, I my first thought that we're being robbed, I thought that that's what was happened, that we're, we're getting robbed by these people, you know. Igor had a gun in his head on the back of the bus and oh my God. they even look at, at Gloria's, uh, our baby who has Zion with us, yeah. he was only like one year old. They look at the formula, they take, they try to, they taste the formula, see there was cocaine in the baby formula. Oh my and, God. So, and we were there for like, I don't know, two hours outside in the freezing cold. They didn't care. And um, very unpleasant. So naturally, uh, you know, we had the song Antichrist and I thought, well, let's change it to Anti-Cop and change all the lyrics. Talk shit about the police on the lyrics, you know. Oh my God. So that's pretty accurate. Wow, okay. Um, this is a, a constant influence for your music, even today, um, was the untimely passing of your stepson, Dana. Yeah, it's, it was a, you know, we had a, a strong bond musically. Um, was really always telling me about new bands and music and stuff I should listen. You know, he's the first one that told me about the Deftones. Really? You know, I never knew who the Deftones were and, and uh, Dana show up one day with a cassette and like check this out and Clutch I never heard Clutch before Dana showed me well told me about Clutch and uh, so he was very involved in a in a scene in fact I think he wanted to be a in in our guy you know was was oh, in his wow. dreams okay. uh, too and I think he would have been a great one because he really. If he's giving you Deftones yeah. tapes, then like obviously yeah. You know before stuff, anybody, right? before anybody knew the Deftones, you know, wow, before they were, before they got big, you know. So that's, that's when wow. we came. We went to see them play. There, there was like fifty people uh, in Phoenix. They had a uh, they had a Winnebago for a tour bus. They didn't even have a tour bus. No. A Winnebago, and we went in a in a Winnebago and met all of them. It was awesome. Really cool. Wow. Yeah. It says in July 2006, you received an unexpected phone call from Igor, uh, and by the end of the conversation, you had invited Igor to come visit you in Phoenix, and this was before a time where you were somewhat estranged, um, to perform with you at a Soulfly show. And after the show, you suggested you begin a new project, and Igor accepted. Yeah, in fact. And pretty that much. was Cavalera Conspiracy? That was the birth of Cavalera Conspiracy. Very cool. And yeah, he, he did call us, but he talked to Gloria first and apologized to her for everything that happened. Oh, wow. Which is really big of him and really cool of him to do that too. And then and then she gave me the phone, which almost gave me a heart attack because I have not talked to him in 10 years, you know. And I was joking, going, like, you, you could have given me a heart attack, you know. You, gotta, <laughs> you just don't handle the phone, like, he's your brother, you know. <laughs> After 10 years, like, what the hell, you know, and wow. But it was really cool, you know, and then uh, I invited him to Phoenix and he flew over to Phoenix and we had a, a show, a Dana show, Dana Memorial show that we do every year. Yeah. And we end up jamming, uh, I don't remember what we, I think we played Refuse and Resist and Roots, but the crowd went absolutely crazy. It was just like, wow. So intense that at the dressing room, Backstage after the show, I told him, "Let's, we have to continue making music, man. We have to keep playing together, you know." And uh, so I actually lied to him. I said, "I got ten songs already written. I got, <laughs> I got a whole record, brother. You know, was, it's all good. You tell me when you want to do it. It's it's ready to go." And I only had one song. It was <laughs> was inflicted, you know, which was going to be a Soulfly song. Wow. Uh, which actually Gloria put out on the internet years ago. Okay. The, the demo version of Inflicted. And uh, so after doing that, I had to go back and write the rest of the album, which I did, you know. What a cool way to reconnect, man. That's gotta be, yeah. that had to be so nice. Okay, last one for you. Uh, the Inflicted album 
uh, was inspired by Sepultura's 1992 visit to Indonesia where you saw, uh, in quote, a crazy ritual which included self-inflicted pain, knives, blood, and fire. Yeah, I, you know, that's what gave the name, the record name, Inflicted. You wow. Know, uh, we saw this ritual called Debus in Indonesia and it was quite amazing. Igor actually got a lot on video and uh, it was a lot of crazy things that night, you know, Gloria drank snake blood. Oh, and, wow. And she was pregnant with Zion, which explains a lot of his... Whoa, uh, <laughs> that's so... <laughs> a lot of how he, he acts today, I think, goes back to the snake blood. Uh, wow. They don't have warnings for that, do they? And, and no, so it's not a big deal, really. She was doing the shots, and I look under the table, and I was all these little heads jumping, still moving, and I was like, oh, it's just creepy, crazy. I am not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what was... What was this ritual for exactly? Well, we were invited there by a millionaire. Um, Whoa, okay. This has got 10 times more weird. But yeah, it was, a, it was a millionaire guy. It was part of the show. He, was, he has something to do with the show. And he was one of the richest guys in Indonesia. And he had a whole, it was like weird. It was like Pablo Escobar's house. You know, it was like a, no way. Like a messed up neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, unpaved, oh, unpaved road and you open the gate the guy got his own zoo inside the house you know it's like surreal and uh, so he had the whole ritual set up for us to, to watch and there was always kind of crazy kids things people putting needles through their face and a little kid they, they fry an egg on the kid's head they set <laughs> his towel on fire and uh, and then he had a jam room with all like Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen guitars on the wall, you know, that he bought it. And he had a jam room set up for us to play, so I think we went and we jammed like Troops of Doom or something, you know, like, yeah, you guys can come here and play. And so we did like one song for him, just just him as one person, you know, watching our show. And it was, it was a crazy night. Definitely one of the craziest, weirdest <laughs> things I ever seen. Thank you so much. This was so much, this is such yeah. a good one. Thank you so much, Max Cavalera, everybody.